The next reaction we're going to talk about is a way to incorporate alkyl groups onto the benzene ring. This is a process called the Friedel-Crafts alkylation. So what happens in this reaction is that we take our aromatic, we treat it with an alkyl chloride or other alkyl halide. We have to add a catalyst, and the one that we're going to use in this case is aluminum trichloride, and that will install that alkyl group onto the aromatic ring with HCl as the byproduct. Now, in general, uh, most alkyl groups will react, although not all will be appropriate for this process. So how does this work? Well, as we have come to see in other reactions, we first have to generate an electrophile that's reactive enough. And in this case, what we're going to generate is a carbocation, which you probably recognize as a very reactive intermediate. Okay, so let's use a specific example, isopropyl chloride, and we're going to react to that with aluminum chloride, which remember is a Lewis acid, so it wants to accept an electron pair, and where it's going to accept that from is the chloride or other halide. Okay, so this is what would happen. We would form a complex, and we might initially draw it in this fashion, right, where then we can put the charges, the formal charges in with a positive on the chlorine. In this case, what's going to happen though is we're just going to completely ionize. So we're just going to have the whole aluminum tetrachloride anion leave. Okay, so we get our carbocation and then the anion is going to be the AlCl4 minus. All right, so here's our reactive intermediate, our carbocation, okay? Certainly reactive enough to undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Okay, so now we're ready to react with the benzene. So here's our cation. And as we've seen before, the pi cloud of the benzene is going to attack that carbocation. We'll form that bond. And here's our cationic intermediate. And then all we need to do is regain aromaticity. So we're going to deprotonate, regain aromaticity, And there we have it. So we spit off a molecule of HCl and we also regenerate our aluminum trichloride catalyst. And there is our alkylated benzene. Okay, so that is a useful way to install alkyl groups onto uh, aromatic rings. Now, there's a couple important points here. Um, the first point that I'd like to make is that um, Basically, the, the Friedel-Crafts alkylation, or FCA, um, really works with any carbocation. Any carbocation, right? So it doesn't much matter um, how we generate that carbocation um, or, or where it came from. If you can get to a carbocation, it's pretty much, unless it's a very stable one, it's going to be reactive enough to um, react with benzene. And so one uh, very important real-world example of this is the reaction of phenol with a molecule called acetone, right? So we actually have a reaction of two molecules of phenol, one molecule of acetone, and we're going to use a, a strong acid here. The acid is going to protonate the oxygen of the acetone to basically leave what behind what is essentially a carbocation um, at that carbon. The phenol can attack twice and what you get to at the end is a, a double Friedel-Crafts on the acetone. Okay, so we have two molecules of phenol. Oops, sorry about that. Two molecules of phenol incorporated 
and this molecule is called bisphenol A, right? And so you might recognize this. This was in the news quite a bit, um, maybe five years ago or so. Um, and so this is actually um, one of the most uh, widely used chemicals in the world, actually. Um, billions of, of tons of this are produced because it's a principal component of many polycarbonate plastics. And so this is used in a, in a lot of different products. Um, and there was a lot of concern, or there is a lot of concern, about the fact that this molecule can actually act as a, a hormone. And so there was uh, a very much concern about this being used um, in food packaging or uh, containers that, that would uh, have liquids uh, that people would consume. And so uh, basically this has been um, uh, removed from a lot of that packaging and especially uh, baby bottles, uh, for example. So very important uh, chemical, also a controversial one, and it's synthesized by a friedel crafts reaction. Okay, so the friedel crafts sounds like it's a, a really fantastic um, reaction, and in some ways it is, but there are a number of important points that we need to appreciate about this uh, process because um, the, well, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So I'm going to call this caveats. Okay, this is a, these are things that that won't work out well. All right, so I just showed you isopropyl uh, chloride reaction, and we can also do certain other things. So, uh, for example, if we did ethyl chloride, simple ethyl chloride um, in a Friedel Crafts, this will probably um, probably go pretty well for us. So aluminum trichloride as our catalyst. Okay, and we can we can install that ethyl group on our benzene. So we'll say that that works fine um, for the most part. But what happens if we try to do something that looked uh, very much similar? So just propyl chloride. All right, so we'll try to do the exact same uh, process here. And you would think, well, this should just be fine then. Um, but um, in fact, it isn't fine. And so what happens if we uh, look at the mechanism, right, we would uh, be trying to generate um, this type of intermediate. All right, so if we, if we tried to ionize, uh, we would get to a primary carbocation. And you recall from last semester that primary, primary carbocations are not stable. They're not very happy. And if you notice, there are uh, two um, adjacent protons next to that carbocation. And so what will very quickly happen is one of those will actually migrate. So the, the hydrogen, carbon-hydrogen bond, right, will migrate. Those electrons will, will move over with the proton, and that rearrangement will then give you this intermediate, Okay, where we now have a secondary carbocation. Right, so this was primary, this is now secondary and much more stable um, as, as a cation. Okay? And so that is a problem if we were trying to add, um, if we were trying to add uh, n-propyl chloride or n-propyl to the benzene ring, we're actually not going to end up adding that. What we'll end up with after we react with the benzene is isopropyl substituted, right? So that's what we get, okay? So um, if you're trying to get to this molecule, you know, maybe this is a fine way to do it, but if you actually wanted to have n-propyl benzene, um, this is not going to get it done because your your that rearrangement to get the more star stable carbocation is too fast and you just can't outcompete it. Okay, so so that's uh, a, something that's that's very important to um, keep in mind that uh, Friedel Crafts is not going to work with primary carbocations. Okay, related to that is that you can also have alkyl shifts. Okay, so not only can protons shift to give more stable carbocations, but so can alkyl groups. So an example of this would be, right, so here's another molecule um, where if we ionize this, we're going to get a primary carbocation. Okay, so so there 
there's our cover cation and that's not going to be stable. And so what will happen is, is one of these adjacent methyl groups here will just migrate over. Right? So then we'll get to a much more stable uh, tertiary carbocation. So we go from primary to tertiary, primary to tertiary, okay? And that's a much happier situation. And so after we react with benzene, that's the product that we'll get, okay? So this is a very important thing to keep in mind that um, uh, the Friedel crafts, because we're generating carbocations, which are just inherently unstable, um, you're, you're, it's going to find its way to the most stable carbocation. Okay, so unless you're trying to uh, to generate the most stable carbocation, you're bound to get mixtures um, or uh, completely the the wrong product that you were trying to generate. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, the next thing. Right? So this is just a list of things that don't work um, with Friedel Crafts. So Friedel Crafts alkylation um, also doesn't work uh, when you've got benzenes that are um, substituted with electron withdrawing groups. Right, and so that's actually a lot of important groups here. So it's just it's simply not going to work. Um, and so if we could draw this out so that we're more explicit, if I have an X substituent there, and I'm trying to do a Friedel Crafts ALC, sorry, ALCL3. Let me just redo that. ALCL3. So I'm trying to substitute, and I'll just pick one isomer there, okay? Um, there is going to be no reaction if X equals any of the following. So any uh, strongly electron withdrawing groups. Okay, so uh, ammonium, nitro, um, cyano, sulfonic acid, an aldehyde, um, a ketone, an acid, an ester. So none of these um, are going to work. Okay, so that's that's a bit of a limitation. Um, and so you have to figure out ways around that if, if you actually want to get to those types of products. Okay. All right, we'll talk about a bit more about these electron withdrawing groups in a little bit. Um, and then the last uh, sort, of, sort of problem is um, one to do with reactivity. So um, we'll call this problem over alkylation. All right, so um, what happens here is, um, and again, we're going to get into this in more detail in just a second, but um, after you do a friedel crafts reaction, so you convert your benzene into a benzene that is substituted with an alkyl group, it turns out that an alkyl group um, actually increases the electron density of the aromatic ring. So it turns out that the product here is actually going to be more reactive than the starting material, which means that um, the next alkylation reaction that is going to happen Right, the next molecule it's going to react is a bit more likely to react with this intermediate, uh, the, well, this monoalkylation product than it is with the benzene itself. So you're going to end up getting uh, dialkylation products, and we could just pick any isomer. There's going to be a bunch of them. But then, of course, here we've got two alkyl groups, so that's even more electron rich than the mono, and so you're going to keep going, right? So it, uh, this overalkylation of Friedel Crafts um, in Friedel Crafts reactions is a huge problem, and you uh, oftentimes will end up getting uh, a mixture of products when you were just hoping for one. Um, so there are ways around that, but um, that that is a bit of an issue. Okay, nevertheless, Friedel Crafts alkylation has its place. Um, and before uh, we move on to the next um, reaction, which is related to this one, um, I just want to point out 
one important um, uh, reaction of alkylated benzenes, and that is the oxidation with potassium permanganate. All right, so KMNO4, you might remember this is a very powerful oxidant. And what will happen here is if we have any, any alkylated benzene, right? So we could just pick this one, for example. If we react that with KMNO4, this will actually oxidize that group up to a carboxylic acid. Right? So in this case, we have a molecule called toluene with just a methyl substituent, and we can convert that to benzoic acid. Okay. Now the details of this KMNO4 um, are such that um, essentially any, um, any uh, alkyl group attached to the benzene will do this reaction as long as there's at least one hydrogen next to the aromatic ring in the so-called benzylic position. Okay, so if we had for example, if we were somehow to get to our propyl benzene or n-propyl benzene that we were looking for, uh, we look here in the benzylic position, so benzylic benzylic position that's uh, right next to the aromatic ring, we see we have two carbon hydrogens, so that's plenty good. And if we treat this with KMNO4, essentially the whole rest of this gets chopped off and we will also get to benzoic acid, okay? So, so anything, it doesn't matter what's hanging off the rest of this, as long as there's that C uh, that carbon next to the, to the aromatic ring with at least one um, carbon-hydrogen bond, this will uh, happen. So just to drive this home, let me show you another example. So here's one where I'm going to have two methyl groups. And if I treat this with KMNO4, I will get out two carboxylic acids. Okay, so that works as well. And you could have you could have six alkyl groups, and they all could be oxidized in this way. Um, and then, so I'll just give you an example of one that won't work. Okay, so if I had if I had a benzene, and I had a tert butyl group on there. So now in this case, there's no uh, carbon hydrogen bond and so now if I treat this with KMNO4 now there's going to be no reaction okay so that's the only case that that won't react but everything else um, that benzylic position is going to get chewed up oxidized up to a carboxylic acid okay so that's that's a very useful um, utilization of alkyl benzenes